to our Christmas Eve service. I'm Pastor Corey Lahari, and I'm so thankful that you could join us this evening uh, to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Let's begin our time of worship with prayer. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, into the world to rescue us. We thank you for the, the beautiful Christmas story, Lord, and we ask that your Holy Spirit tonight would encourage our hearts, would, would give us a deep feeling of your hope, uh, that you would, you would anchor us in your peace, that, that we would be able to celebrate with joy, and that, that our hearts would be filled with love today as we, as we hear about the birth of Christ and as we celebrate him and his birth. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship is from the prophet Isaiah, uh, chapter 7, verse 14. This is written some 700 years before the birth of Jesus. Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Emmanuel means God with us. And tonight on Christmas Eve, we light the four candles of Advent and also the center candle, the Christ candle. The first candle we light is the candle of hope. Next, the candle of peace. Then, the candle of joy. And our fourth candle, the candle of love. And tonight on Christmas Eve, we light the center candle, the white candle, symbolizing Christ's holiness, purity, and righteousness, the Christ candle. I hope you had some candles at home that you could light, but these symbolize that the, the light of the world has come into our darkness. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, 
verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Kids of all ages, gather around. We're going to have a, a children's message for Christmas Eve. Come draw near if you want. Maybe you're at home in your pajamas or something. Whatever's going on uh, with your families, that's great. But I, I'm going to give a kid's message and talk about presents. Um, I love getting presents as, as a kid. And, you know, sometimes I'd be kind of greedy. And I, I you know, that kind of stills the joy of Christmas when you, when you just want lots of stuff. But I, I admit, little Corey, before I was Pastor Corey, uh, you know, I just wanted stuff. But it was exciting, right, to get, to get presents. And I remember the year I got a baseball mitt, and I was so excited about that. And I have great memories of getting board games with my brothers and, and, and you know, playing together. And, and just those gifts brought joy. And, and they were ways that we could celebrate together. So I hope you get some fun gifts. Um, and I, I wanted to, to read a story from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, about the gifts that were brought to Jesus. And they weren't very fun uh, for Jesus the baby, but they were really helpful gifts, I think, for Jesus' uh, family. And I think they were gifts that honored him as a king. And that's why we give gifts, because Jesus was the great gift for us, and also the wise man, the magi, the wise man gave gifts to the baby Jesus. And so we continue that tradition of giving one another gifts to celebrate Jesus, the great gift. So I want to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of Bethlehem, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. That's how Herod talked, I think. So he was kind of a jerk. Anyway, verse, verse 9. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Can you imagine that? And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Wow, that's a cool story of these, these powerful men, these wise men from another country. They came all these hundreds of miles to bring these gifts to, to a, a baby. But it wasn't just a baby. It was a king far greater than them. And so they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh, and they gave it to, to Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus to honor him. So when you get gifts, uh, maybe get some gifts on Christmas Eve, maybe it's Christmas morning, may we see our gifts as gifts that our loved ones have given us, 
but all our gifts are given ultimately from God. And may we give God thanks for all the gifts that we give and we receive. Because God is our great gift. Have a great Christmas. We're going to read two stories, or portions of two stories, one from Luke's Gospel and one from John's Gospel. We'll start with Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. 
But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, our theme this season has been light out of the darkness. And you just heard from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, that the light has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. The light has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. And that light has a name. That light is Jesus Christ. He is truly the light of the world because he is God. And he is God that came to earth as God with us, Emmanuel, to bring God's love to us born as a real human child to disperse the gloomy clouds of night and to put death's dark shadow to flight. We sing Silent Night traditionally on Christmas Eve about the night of his birth. But that was not a night of darkness, though it was night, right? That night, the light of heaven was born into our world and laid there in a feeding trough, in a, in a manger, that night, the light of the world, the hope of all nations, was triumphing over darkness just by being here with us and bringing heaven's peace with him. Friends, the darkness will not win. Hatred, division, discord, bitterness, selfishness, sin, evil, and death, they will not win. For a greater power has come into the world, a greater light than all that darkness, and has defeated these dark powers. The greatest power of all, God, has been born into the world, and darkness is on notice. Its time is short. So would you join me in believing that this Christmas, the light of God is stronger than any darkness? Would you join me in having hope that God will make good on all the promises he gave us to be with us, to love us, to forgive us, and to give us life with him in a new heaven and a new earth? Will you join me in having peace that passes the world's understanding of peace straight from the Prince of Peace, that deep peace, that deep contentment in our souls? Would you join me in having joy this Christmas, choosing joy, choosing to rejoice and celebrate no matter the darkness of the circumstances around us, having joy at the deep goodness of God. Rejoice that our God is Emmanuel, God with us. And when you have that hope, that peace, that joy, God will fill your hearts with love, causing you to want to love God back and wanting, uh, wanting to love your neighbor, wanting to love your family, your friends, and also those who don't agree with us, those who might call themselves enemies to us, we, we should have hearts filled and overflowing with love like Jesus loved us. So will you join me this Christmas in loving one another as God has loved us, sending his one and only son into the world for us? Let's pray. God, thank you for the good news of Christmas. And I pray this message hits each heart the way you want it to and blesses your people and all who hear it. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And now we are going to pass the light. I encourage you to, to take your candle, and if you have a Christ candle at home, light your candle as a symbol of the light of God coming into the world. And I want to read to us as we share the light with one another from the good news according to Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be reg registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Now let's sing together, Silent Night.
rejoice. Jesus Christ is our Savior, our Lord, and He is the light of God that has come into the world. Let's close this, this beautiful time of worship together in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your amazing love for us. We thank you for the hope that we have because of Jesus. We thank you for the peace that he brings to our souls. We thank you for the joy, the deep joy we have in our hearts because we know we are your children and we are loved. And we thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, born into the world, for the light that he brings us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the light has come into the world, and the darkness cannot overcome it. I pray that you have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.